So this is section 1.3 where we talk about n behavior. It's the limits at plus or minus infinity. So the behavior of the function f of x, so the behavior of f of x as x approaches plus infinity or negative infinity is known as the n behavior of the function. Basically, as x gets very large or very small, what are the values of f of x at the ends of the graph? So let's look at an example. OK, so this example, here's our function f of x, this blue line. And we want to know, the first question is, as x approaches infinity, so here's the x axis. So as it approaches infinity, what y, what is the y value? So we can see here, as x is approaching infinity, it's getting closer and closer to the y equals negative 1. So that's our limit. It's our right behavior of our function, the end behavior. The left side behavior is as x goes to negative infinity. So coming along here, we can see the function is getting, cl getting closer and closer to that y value of 2. Okay, let's do another one. OK, so this function. We have different end behaviors also. As x goes to plus infinity, so as we're getting close out further and further and further, we can see the y values heading to negative infinity. As we're approaching x approaching negative infinity, again, so what's going on with the graph? It's oscillating, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller oscillations. So hopefully you can see that the y value is approaching 0. Just a note for this right behavior. Even though it's in negative infinity, this is behavior only. It really is a DNE. But again, a lot of times we find the end behavior when we graph. If you remember graphing, um, hopefully you graphed last semester, functions, rational functions, and we did horizontal asymptotes. Well, the horizontal asymptotes are exactly that. It's the end behavior. I'll go ahead and write out a function this time. The function is sine of x. That's a quick one to graph. So we know plug in 0, you get 0, and then it repeats. And it goes on forever. And we could write the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x, or we can actually substitute, we know what that function is, sine of x, and what is that answer? Let's write them both out. So since it's not actually getting, this oscillation is not getting any smaller, like in our previous problem where we can see the oscillation was approaching zero, this one keeps oscillating and so it doesn't actually hit one value. So this is a DNE because it's oscillating. But be careful, just that's not really the only reason because of our previous one, we can see. It's not approaching one number. It's approaching many numbers. So here's this graph again. So our basic graph. So remember, it's vertical asymptote at x equals zeros. We did that problem in the last video. So we can see here as x approaches positive infinity, the graph is approaching zero. And same with on this side, as x is approaching negative infinity, the graph is approaching the y value of zero. Now just I want to make a note here. This is probably the thing that's helped most of my students. Just this concept. If we're plugging, you know, we're usually plugging this in. I mean, how do you plug in infinity? So when you have 1 over a large 
a very large number. Basically, if you're actually just viewing it like that, we're going to get zero. One divided up between an infinite number of pieces will be zero each. Also, if I have one over zero, we remember in the previous video, when we plugged it in, we got one over zero. It was positive infinity or negative infinity. So one over infinity, we can see approaches zero. And one over zero will approach infinity or negative infinity. Of course, if we had this case, we'd be doing a sign chart to figure out which one. Okay, going on with some more examples. So without looking at the graph, but we do know we could. So this is the function y equals x. And this is y equals x squared, if you want to sketch it. So here we can see if x is going to negative infinity, it is going to negative infinity. If it's going to positive infinity. And then we can also imagine it being plugged in. If we plug in negative infinity, we get negative infinity. If we plug in positive infinity, we get positive infinity. Again, behavior only. And we can see both the left and right beha behavior of this graph is plus infinity. Again, if you're plugging in a negative, you're, you've got two negatives, and which results in a positive. And you plug in a positive, of course, you've got a positive. So I also want us to recall at this point So I want us to recall that the end behavior of a polynomial is the same as the function a to the n, x to the n, where basically that is the highest power of the polynomial. So it has the same end behavior. If you want to look at an example, well, if we were to multiply this out, you'd get x to the third plus and then minus 4 with plus a lot of middle terms that I don't know what they are. But we can sketch this really quick, too, because we have the zeros. It's 1, negative 1, negative 4, leading coefficient, positive. There's my sign chart. There's my graph. And if we look at the graph of x to the third, again, we only really care about the end behavior. And the right behavior is positive infinity. The net left behavior is negative infinity. So writing that out. So going to the right, it's positive infinity. X going to the left, it's negative infinity. Just a note here. So if I take a function and I multiply it by a negative constant, or if you factor out a negative, it's going to reverse the signs of the end behavior. Okay, um, clearly if you multiply by just a positive constant, it's not going to change the sign, so it'll have the same end behavior. So let's look at an example. And if we wanted to, we can write this as 3, pull that constant out, but it's not necessary. And we could even, this is going to be infinity to the fifth power, which is just infinity, plus infinity. Again, you're plugging in a positive, very big number, and it is a big number, a positive big number, to the fifth power times 3 equals positive, because it's all positive. Let's do the same problem, plugging in negative infinity, and this is 3 to the minus infinity to the fifth. Or basically just a big number, a minus big number to the fifth, which is five negatives, which is going to be negative infinity. Again, fifth power, odd, alternating behaviors and behaviors.
again, we can keep that negative in or pull it out, but it's going to be negative. It'll be basically it's minus times positive big number to the third. It's one negative, which is negative infinity. This one, we have a negative to a minus big number to the third. So let's count them. We have three negatives plus one on the outside. We have four negatives equals positive. So that's positive infinity. Count your negatives. Again, we're just plugging in negative. There's three negatives plus four. It's positive. Okay, I think you get the idea. Let's do some other examples. So if you wanted to just plug in infinity, negative infinity as is, we do see we're going to have a positive infinity over a positive infinity, which is the same case as 0 over 0. This is undeterminate. It doesn't mean it's infinity. It doesn't mean they cancel and you get 1. We just don't know yet. We have work to do. So if you remember, too, you might have done this technique when you were graphing rational functions to find the horizontal asymptote because it's the same process. Okay, so to find this limit, we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. So that would be x squared. So to divide top and bottom, I can multiply by 1 over x squared. That's times 1. And we're going to distribute that. So again, we can just see here, I just divided everything by x squared. Now let's simplify, clean it up. Now we can distribute this limit per se. We can remember the limit of a sum, limit of a quotient, and so forth. Now all the limits exist, so we can distribute it. But I'm going to basically just do one at a time. When I have minus 3 over negative infinity, 3 over negative infinity or th negative 3 over a super large number, it will go to 0. 1 over infinity will go to 0. This one will go to 0. And so basically I have 0 plus 0 all over 2 plus 0, which is 0 over 2, which is actually just 0. So our limit as x approaches negative infinity is 0. Basically, it has a horizontal asymptote at 0. You know, another thing to look out for when my denominator is larger than the numerator, you probably will get a 0 asymptote horizontal asymptote, which is our end behavior. Let's do another one. So we're going to do the same here. It does say by the highest power of x in the denominator. So that is just x. So it's 1 over x, 1 over x. So I'm just going to simplify as we go along here. 2x squared plus 3x. Okay, so all of the powers went down by 1 because I divided by x. This will go to 0. This will go to 0. And all we have left, again, we, don't, we could ignore this because it's not the highest power. So the bottom is just a constant. So basically, we're just plugging in negative infinity into 2x squared which is positive infinity. So just a note here, why not divide by x to the third, the largest power in general? I'm going to try it so you can see. When we simplify it, Seems like this is going to work out nicer, but this will go to zero. I divide by a large number, that goes to zero. This goes to zero, and this goes to zero. 
which leaves me 2 over 0. And 2 over 0, all we know about that is that's equal to plus infinity or minus infinity. We'd have to figure out which one. Well, we did figure out which one by using the previous method of only dividing by the largest power in the denominator. We saw that we would get positive infinity. So to do this problem, we'll remember the limit of a power is the power of the limit. This power is one third. So we're gonna do this, change that to one third and take the limit first and then take the power of one third. And here we'll divide top and bottom everything by x. This goes to zero, this goes to zero. And then we get, sorry about that, that's one third. One third, two over 16 which works out to be one half. So this one we can't do like our last one because it's only got a radical in the numerator, not the denominator. So we want to kind of utilize the previous process of dividing by the highest power in the denominator, which is x. The only problem is if I divide, so the only problem with this is the top. You can't just divide the square root of x squared plus 5 divided by x. It won't divide into that square root. So what we're going to have to do is something slightly different, but along the same lines. And we're going to have to recall a definition. Square root of x squared is actually the absolute value of x. We get this piecewise definition. It's x if x is strictly greater than or equal to 0. It's minus x if x is less than 0. So how does that help me? Well, I'm going to basically divide top and bottom by absolute value of x. Same thing, top and bottom. But I can replace one of them with the square root of x squared. So instead of 1 over absolute value of x, it's 1 over the square root of x squared, this one. In addition, instead of 1 over absolute value of x, I can replace it with one of these. Since I know this limit is going to negative infinity, that means we're evaluating it for negative values of x. So it gets replaced with minus x. So now this can be divided and it can be one square root. We can combine them. So now we evaluate this at negative infinity. That term goes to zero. This term goes to zero. And we are left with the square root of 1 over minus 2, which is minus 1 half. That's our answer.